Well, I, I don't know if I could really expand upon uh, what's been read. Frankly, I'm, I'm really passionate about um, efficient and effective patient care, whether it's medical, dental, or, or veterinary. As a physician, I didn't understand how very inefficient our practice was until I left. And I will share with you, to this day, my husband's practice is horribly inefficient. And it's just, it's not fair to the patients. But you know how it is telling doctors, doesn't go so well all the time. <laughs> So I work on it from my end, and that is through, through our company at this point in time. The innovation really wants, needs to be centered around that outcome, whether it's better patient outcomes clinically or, again, more, more efficiency and effectiveness in the practices that, that we serve. Um, I'm also um, very passionate about women and networking. When we, when we decided to think about the Professional Women in Healthcare group, it was really about the fact that women tended to not network well we would notice that the guys would go off golfing during industry events and they would network and the women would go to their rooms and do emails. <laughs> check things off the list, that's what we do. And we thought, you know, we're really doing ourselves as women a disservice because all that network and relationship creating ends up being really good business. So um, as we started to talk this through, we realized that there were three components that the women in the industry were lacking, mentoring, education, and networking. And so we formed a group that provides that now to particularly the young women and the young women leaders that are coming. You know, you can't, you can't pay back. You can only pay forward. So I'm, I'm passionate about young women and leadership as well. Lastly, I feel as though, um, you know, we've had a bit of a, a theme today around gratitude. And that is, you know, when you visited third world environments that everything here we have that we take for granted is so very scarce in other parts of the world, particularly for me, uh, uh, health care. And so I believe that anything we can do to provide health care or provide services that will bring better out health outcomes to people who have nothing, I'm just incredibly passionate about that. And I'm fortunate to work with a group of people who also believe in that. So we can do the greater good thing within our company by doing blood drives and by volunteering, but we can also take it to third world environments where there is no health care or dental care. So thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm very, um, an open book, actually. Uh, maybe I don't need this. Uh, but, um, um, Everyone who's come across uh, Ashburn Children's Dentistry understands that we live by the philosophy of making sure that we're creating childhood memories that will make a new generation of patients who are not afraid to go to the dentist. I've been very passionate about that, and uh, everything we do at the office, including the decor, and even when we go to technology like lasers and things like that, it's only because we want them to have such great memories. And you know, life gets tougher as you get older. And we want them to think about their times at Ashburn Children's Dentistry as one of those times in their lives that things were great. And you know, sometimes it's something that you need to lead you just over to the better side instead of being so depressed and you can think of having to laugh at one of my songs because I make them up as I go along. <laughs> and sometimes I say, stop singing. And you know, it's still as much fun today as it was 25 years ago since I graduated as a dentist. And that story about my brother was very, very uh, close to my heart. He's a physician now himself. And at that time, we didn't know what was wrong with him. And being the first of eight kids, I could relate with Lisa when she said, oh, you got to do this right because everybody else is looking up to you and you can't do this, you can't do that. And uh, lucky for me, my dad, who is also my inspiration, had and barely had any education, but all he wanted for us was to be educated, go to school, no matter what it was, you must be educated. And to this day, I'm constantly looking for, how do I get better? What am I going to do? Why, how do I stay ahead of the leading technology and things like that? But in any case, um, my brother being so relieved 
by having someone take out that tooth. And at the time, you're young where I come from, you already decide on what you're going to be, or maybe people say, oh, you're so smart, you should be a doctor. And from then on, that's what you were thinking, oh, I'm going to be a doctor, or I'm going to be a doctor, and it really took it to heart. So having someone relieve my brother of pain, which at the time, I never, we didn't go to the dentist. What do you need to go to the dentist for? We didn't know what it was. You got your vaccinations. I mean, you were going through malaria every week. So there were more important things to worry about. And um, maybe because we didn't have so much sweets, but then that always makes me think, oh, everybody's immunity is different. We were all on the same diet. Why did my brother have something so bad that he had get a swollen face from it? But um, being in that environment where just something she did made him feel better, just said, now how do you become this kind of doctor? And so she said, oh, it's a lot of work. And the funny thing is that she wasn't even from my country. She was a foreigner who was working in my country. And she said, it's a lot of work. You have to do this. You have to do that. And uh, as I grew up, I later found out what she meant, that it was a lot of work. <laughs> Going through dental school, it was seven years of medicine and dentistry. You went just going to dental school because you could be the only doctor in a 50 mile radius and you had to be able to treat different different things certain little things and if the next door neighbor said oh i have malaria i need an injection you can't say oh no i don't do that kind of job or you would not be eating because <laughs> nobody they would say oh she's not smart enough don't even go near there so you had to it was a lot of struggle and coming out the best in my class and then coming over to this country because uh, we moved over here, it was still a lot of trouble, a lot of work to get licensed. And today when I say I'm in competition with myself is because I never want to drop the ball. I always want to give it my best. I don't know anything else I could be doing other than pediatric dentistry. And I have a lot of fun doing it. And I hope other people could maybe have some fun treating kids. They're really adorable. They're not little adults. <laughs> They're not little adults, and you, some of them may cry, but you want them to recover quickly, and quickly they do as they go out to get their bouncy ball or go back to play in the treehouse. So we try to make it pleasurable, and as much as you can make dentistry, which, you know, using not having to be numb helps. 95% of them get their work done without local anesthesia because of that technology I was talking about earlier. And uh, some people just are not sure about it, but it requires a lot of education. So I make all the doctors in the practice go for continuing education. It's very expensive, obviously, because it's not just the cost of the program, but you don't have any production during those times. But as far as I'm concerned, not having a kid numb is worth everything, because when I get numb, I am not a happy camper. So, but anyway. I thank you very much. This was a great surprise, and um, um, I don't know how I get to be up here as a clinical expert, but uh, I'm very grateful, and I've really thoroughly enjoyed my time here. Thank you. Uh, it, it wasn't in my game plan to be the dentist for the, the poor. Um, I was just kind of went from job to job and that's what I became um, known to do and for years and years I stayed within the four walls of the clinic just trying to treat as many people as I could and you can imagine that after a while you realize you're not even making a dent so at that point I had to get outside the four walls and get involved heavily with organized dentistry which were a bunch of old white men to be frank <laughs> and <laughs> However, I played on a men's ice hockey team, so I figured I could handle it, but it was in those arenas to be the voice um, for the poor where I got the legs um, to, be, to be a leader. And I don't think that you always choose that. Moses um, was a great leader. He didn't choose it. He fought against it. Um, so it's a struggle every day to, to stay the course. What I want to encourage you all is only 4% of Fortune 500 companies are led by women. In organized dentistry, where are all the women? 
Um, we have some great ones in the room. Dr. Terrell Proper, who came with me. Um, yeah. um, she has been a wonderful mentor for me and um, served as chair on our board of directors and is being inducted into the um, Academy, American and Adonis Association as vice president um, next week. Um, so those leaders are there. Um, we need women doing the leading. Um, I know that you have a lot on your plate. You can have it all, the two prizes that um, Helen Hunt told, told about. Um, it, it's delegating the pieces that someone else can do. For me, it's having a brilliant um, life partner, my husband Dan, of, of 17 years, and so we just work it out on who's gonna do what. And in your practice, it's the same thing. You, you may have some great leaders in your practice that you can delegate some of the things so you can take the time to get involved with organized dentistry. Um, and I'll just leave you with my, my favorite um, Gandhi quote because it, it's what I live by, is that to find yourself, the best way to do that is to lose yourself in the service of others. So thank you for this great honor. Can you hear? Yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. Whoops. Um, can we go backwards on this? Go the opposite direction. Direction. Here we go. Here, let me grab that one. Okay. Can you stop it and tell me this? Yeah, there you go. And whenever okay. you want to, just hit this to go the next time. Okay, perfect. Um, so the amazing thing is I'm a dentist today because growing up I hated going to my dentist and when I met my friend on the bus, my, um, what I said to her actually was, what are you doing today? You must be in medicine. And because I had a tiger mom and everyone had to be a doctor or a lawyer growing up Chinese, <laughs> you only had two choices. And, and she said she was a dentist. And my response was, I hate my dentist. Who would ever want to be a dentist? <laughs> but I love being a dentist and prosthodontics has been the perfect profession for me. And um, it's a combination of art and science, engineering, and allows you to develop relationships with your patients and your colleagues. So it's, I've found it very rewarding, and every day it's been very rewarding to me. I am very passionate about the type of dentistry we do in our practice. Um, having trained at the University of Washington under Ralph Udalis and John Coyce, we learned that no matter what you're doing, all the way down to a simple crown or filling, um, to a full mouth reconstruction, everything had to be done excellently, beautifully, and had to be biologically sound for the patient. So I'd like to share a little bit of the dentistry that we've uh, um, executed in my practice. And we have all sorts of patients. Is this an advance on its own, Greg? Can, can we stop it? Sorry. Where's Brad? Oh, sorry, Brad. Is there any way we can have it go so it only advances when I advance it? Uh, there should be, yeah. Because it seems like it starts and then it keeps on going. Try to... Uh... Yeah, don't hit the middle button. There's this little guy Just that, so, okay. All right, thank you. All right, so we have a mix of patients in my practice, all the way down to the general practice patient just... Um, coming in for checkups and cleanings and fillings, all the way to patients who need, it's still going. Where did I go? Yeah, yeah it, what, it's still going. Go. No, you tell me and I'll hit it, hit it as, yeah. we, as we need it. Because I didn't it's touch not, anything, but it just no, goes no, automatic. No. So all the way, we have very simple patients all the way up to full mouth reconstruction patients. And so the first patient I want to share with you is someone who, go ahead who came in and she didn't like her smile. She didn't like her teeth and she said, I don't want just orthodontics, I want a, a fuller smile, my teeth to fill my smile and whiter. 
And the teeth look pretty white here because that's a flash from the camera. But she said, I don't even like the shape of my teeth. So orthodontics and bleaching is not going to help me. She wanted veneers. And she was referred to me for that. Go ahead, please. And so you can even see she has striations of her teeth. She does have very small teeth. Go ahead, please. And so these are, oops, too far. OK, and hold there, please. So these are the, oops, is that her? So these are the veneers that she was completed with. I think it's a little bleached out. But no matter what we do, we try and strive for everything to look as natural as possible. I generally am very conservative, but this is someone who said um, orthodontics and bleaching is not going to suffice for her. So she was completed with veneers. Next patient, please. And the next patient came, was referred to me by a colleague. And hold, please. I'm trying. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and he said, he said, I just want to be able to eat without my lateral incisor number seven falling out. Go ahead, please. And this is how he was finished. And he was treated, can you hold please? He was treated with, oh, it's too fast. Hold on this. Yeah, hold on that please. He was treated with a mix of um, crowns and veneers. This is, this, can you hold there please? I'm, I'm doing like an automatic thing. Yeah. So we'll, I'm, I'm gonna have to go forward one and back one. But we'll okay. Leave, we'll get through okay, can we go forward one slide? There you go. So, oops, mm -hmm. right there, if we can hold there. A little too far. All right, so this is where he started. He had a lot of different dentistry at different times in his life. And you can see on the left, because his teeth had worn down, the teeth had super erupted, bringing up the gum line and the bone. And on the lower right, uh, those are actually ponics. He had lost some teeth and had a bone defect. So his teeth were very uneven. And also on the lower left, there was a tooth missing. On the far left posterior, tooth number 19. Go ahead. All right. Okay, so this is how he finished. And this patient ended up having a combination of periodontics, periodontal surgery to augment bone on one side on the lower right and lower the bone on the lower left. So whenever we treat our patients, we try and combine different facets of dentistry um, to really treat the root of the problem and um, execute it with um, some symmetry and improve upon the aesthetics as well as the occlusion and health of the situation. Go ahead with the next patient. The last patient I'm going to share with you, oh, that's the patient's smile. That's how he finished. There, that's his final smile. Okay, so the next patient we're going to hold right here. Right here. Okay, and you can go one slide, please. The next patient was referred to us because she was supposed to have implants to replace some missing posterior teeth. Go ahead, one slide. And turned out it, she had had a lot of wear on her posterior teeth. She has lower anterior crowding. And go ahead, one slide. You can go one more, too. She had worn down her teeth so much that there was no space for her to even have teeth in the posterior. So her periodontist referred her to us because her bite was called, um, she was overclosed because she had worn her posterior teeth down so much now that there's no space interdentally between the upper and lower arches. So even if he had placed implants, there's no room to place crowns. He referred us, the patient, to open her bite and, and then restore with crowns. Her treatment involved placing onlays in the molars and crowns on the premolars to open her bite. Then we also treated her with some Invisalign orthodontics, again using an interdisciplinary approach to widen her smile cor and correct the lower anterior crowding. Go ahead. So there's the crowding that she has in the lower anterior. You can see the posterior teeth are missing. Unfortunately, it's, the slide is bleached out. Go ahead, one. That's her upper. It's hard to see in here, but she has a lot of posterior wear. So you can see the dentin inside her teeth. And go ahead, one more, please. I think we went the wrong way. Oh, and that's how she finished. That's her lower arch. And you can see how everything's aligned. And then, next please. That's her upper arch. She had crowns on the premolars, onlays on the molars to be conservative. And then one more please. And her arch is improved. And you can see how we've opened up her bite. Now she does have her posterior, her molars restored on implants. And one more. And this is the anterior view. This is how she finished. And she was treated very conservatively. That's where she started. And this is where she finished. She's in protrusive here. 
And you can see that her upper and lower anteriors were restored strictly with bonding, so very conservative approach there. And the orthodontics allowed us to give her a much more aesthetic result, as well as healthy and improving her occlusion. Thanks, please. And that's her final smile. You can see how now her teeth are straight, they're beautifully aligned, they're symmetrical, and they really fill her smile. So no matter what we do, whether single filling, single crown, all the way up to a full mouth reconstruction, we try and be as conservative as possible, um, pulling in the other facets of dentistry, such as periodontics, endodontics, and, and orthodontics. And our goal is always to treat, of course, our patients as VIP and um, treat them with excellent customer service as well. Thank you very much.